Welcome to Last Cast. You join us today at a local commercial fishery just outside Bradford. We're at Farview Lakes. It's a small complex with two lakes, both holding plenty of carp. That's the main kind of fish that you'll be looking to fish for here. There's also a good head of roach, skimmers, tench, barbel, etc. Plenty of chub as well to go at. So it's a good mixed fishery. Today the methods we're going to look at are focusing on the carp fishing aspect as if you're doing a match style approach. So we're going to go through the rigs and the bait in a second and show you what we're doing. The line today we're going to be using is six pound TDR. It's not too heavy, not too light, you're not going to get snapped up on this kind of gear. It's low diameter, 020, and it's got a sort of low to, low to medium stretch. So you're going to see the bite's very obvious and it's going to be helping us sink the line. That moves down to a, tw a twizzled boom. Now this is a doubled up length of line that basically kicks the line out from the feeder, saves you tangling on the cast, and it's a lot more abras abrasion resistant. So when the feeder's bouncing up and down, because we're using a running system, it's not going to cut into the line and damage it. So again, you're just making the entire rig more durable, basically. That moves down to a quick change bead. This one's from Drennan. It doesn't really matter what you use, but I prefer to use these rather than the fixed versions because that stops the, uh, the fish bolting in this shallow water. It saves the, uh, the issue. The feeder itself is a 15 gram. Again, as I say, shallow water. You don't want to be crashing a 30 gram on their heads. We're not doing a far chuck today. There's not too much wind. There's no need to go heavier. That moves down to another 13 hook length. And this is down to a uh, four inches, down to a size 16 QM1 hook. That's a circle pattern hook. These never come out. I've lost hardly any fish to them, so I'd highly recommend you try them if you're losing fish on the method as the, as the feeder's bouncing around. And that goes down to a little bait band. And that means you can use eight mil pellet, 10 mil boil it, a whole range of baits, including meat and corn as well, just by pulling the bait band, as we'll show later, into the, the bait, it'll expand and hold that bait. So you can use anything from four mil pellet right up to 12 mils with not a problem if they drilled. Right, so today we're gonna to be using three mil coarse pellets. These are swim stim carp pellets from Dynamite Baits. Um, ideal for this kind of thing, you don't want a, a pellet which is too small, because when you wet it down, it'll usually go to a mush. A pellet that's too large, you're gonna to struggle to get it on the method. So we'll put a few of these in the tub. Just enough for today's session. See there, just should be about right. And now we're going to add the water. Plenty of water in, as you can see, all the pellets are covered. And now we're going to time those for three minutes. The rule of thumb is a minute for one mil, two minute for two mil, and three minute for three mil. So we'll leave those for a few minutes and we'll move on to the ground bait that we're going to prepare. This is going to go down the edge later on. The bait that we're going to use today is green sonia baits with margin carp. Now because the carp here aren't massive, you don't need a very fine or very coarse ground bait. Something that's fairly fairly coarse, so it'll stick to the bottom, but a fine ground bait just to allow enough cloud, especially when the water's coloured as it is today. So we'll put a fair amount of the margin carp in. That's what goes right to the bottom, stays there, it's an inert ground bait. Very dense particles hold a lot of water so you can keep coming back to this and add more and more water you'd be surprised how much water this will hold the next one if i can find it it's going to be the green we're going to look to do somewhere in the order of a 50 50 mix here 
been about half a bag there. Give it a good mix up. You always want to mix the dry contents before you add the water. So when you add the water first, it's not going to mix properly. Give it a good mix around, as you can see, and add the water. As you can see a lot of water's gone in there. That might look like overwetted to a normal ground bait, like a hemp based one, but this will hold a lot of that water. Now this is a ground bait that you want to come back to, you know, after say half an hour, once the particles have all absorbed plenty of water and got to the bottom. You can see the mix is starting to take on all that water there. We're going to come back to that in a short while and have another look to make sure all the particles are evenly distributed with water and we're going to go pass it through a riddle as well. Now we're going to look at draining the uh, pellets off. We've had about three minutes or so. Drain the water off us, so I'll put a bit more of that in with the ground bit, because it will hold it. And strain it off as such. Now you can put a bait box over the top and drain it that way. I just find this is the easiest way. Again, this isn't something that you just leave, you have to come back to it check up on how the mix is looking because depending on the temperatures it might dry out or it might uh, it might be over wetted. I always over wet this because the method of mix that I use incorporates a good couple of handfuls of the ground bait that plugs up all the gaps between the pellets means it sticks together better so it'll get to the bottom quicker and without breaking up on impact. So now that you've seen the baits we're going to be using and the rigs, we're now going to start fishing and show you how to approach this type of peg. really making this hard. If it's across to one side or from, you, from the back it's not too bad. Yeah, then you're definitely going to the same direction. When it's like this, it's going to like cross and up. Yeah. It holds the feeder up in the air so it floats back towards you as well. You might have to step up to a 25 but I don't really want to do that. I can't take my eyes off the rock because you know how quick that last one was. I think that pretty much exactly shows exactly the difference it makes to uh, put the ground bait on the feeder because that just went that extra foot into the reeds there. I'll put the drag on really slack. As you can see, I'm casting now into a new swim. Still got the second line over there, but because this is a shorter chuck, I've been able to clip up there as well and maintain the clip for that swim as well. So if I do need to go back to it, if this one dries up, I can always revert to my original swim.
just sinking a line now, pulling it tight, waiting for the two Vs that I can see on the water to connect. Flick of the rod, and the line sunk. As I said those words, we're in. <laughs> Just keeping the rod low, letting the rod do the work, playing it on the clutch. It's taken a while for that bite, but we've just switched over to a smaller pellet that blends in better. Eventually we've caught one. Well hooked just in the bottom lip. Small little carp. Still full of energy. Out of there, actually looking at it. Yep. Playing the fish, just keeping the rod nice and low. There's no need to pull its head off. Bite there pretty much came instantly as the feeder hit the water. He's coming up nice and close to me. Nearly ready for the net. Nicely hooked just in the bottom lip. See if we'll behave. Nice small mirror carp. A couple of pounds. We'll get it back. Got a 
Well, this is a gunfight now. You see? <laughs> and as he said those words, Right, so we're going to move on from the method feed now. It hasn't really produced. It's been quite difficult. We've had a few fish, but it's not been producing quite heavily. So we're now going to look at fishing down the margins on either side, looking to put a few fish together.
nice common, nice mirror, about three pound, three, four pound, slightly bigger than we were catching across with the method feeder because we're fishing down the near side, you tend to get larger fish there. Right, so after that first fish, we're going to feed again. It's going to go straight back down with another good handful of dead maggot. Topped off with some ground bait. This is just to get the fish focused back in as to where they were before because when a fish exits the peg, it's going to spread the bait about so you just want to concentrate them again. Mine just pigs off its fin. been resting that area of the peg for a short while. We have to refeeding it. Put a few dead maggots on. Went straight back down there within 30 seconds. Had this. Probably about eight to ten pound. So the rig we've been using to catch these fish down the near side margin because the depth has been depth the same down both sides, we've used the same rig. It's double ten elastic, moving down to a 0.2 durable float. This is just a styrofoam style, but the, run, the line runs through the middle to save the line getting damaged. The main line is 017, small bulk of shot, down to an 015 hook length, and a size 12 Kamasan animal hook.
Right, so we've just finished our session at Farview Lakes today. We've had plenty of fish, it started slow on the method feeder, so for a couple of hours we only had four or five fish. We eventually moved into the margin swims, kept topping up after every fish, introduced plenty of bait at the start. We've ended up catching consistently right up until the end, fish up until about eight to ten pounds, and many sort of in the sort of five, six pound region as well. So that concludes our day, we've had a good session here, and hopefully we'll see you on the next one. Let's do some fishing, kids. <laughs> Don't put that on there. <laughs> <laughs> right.